Hello, my name is Achila Yona, owner and co-founder of Shop Originine. How are y'all guys doing today? So today I'm going to be discussing Guinea or Guinea and discussing how that relates to original Americans and original American um, history and culture. One second, because this information is juicy. Okay, so I know since history class we have been taught about Guinea and the slave trade and how Guinea is African and um, Guinea comes from Africans and all this other different stuff, okay? But when it comes to original Americans and our culture and our knowledge of what we know, it's crickets like no one doesn't really talk about it so today I'm gonna be going into depth about this because people need to know like a lot of these terms a lot of these words come from us and I know um, many originates were sent to Africa as slaves as um, you know free people you know to go there and work we also know about Liberia too. Um, many originating people from North and South, and South were sent to, you know, Africa. So there's a lot of um, cross between cultures and words and stuff like that. I know I get hit with like so many people like, oh well, you know, Africa brings this, Africa brings that, but people forget that. A lot of African crops actually come from America okay there are a lot of American words that are now being used in Africa due to our people being sent there and going there so people need to keep that stuff in mind okay so I wrote everything down let's get to this okay Let's start with the etymology of the word Guinea or Guinea. Okay? And I got this um etymology of the word from E T Y M online dot com. So Guinea or Guinea region along the west coast of Africa. Presumably from an African word, perhaps um, Iguinua. I don't know how to pronounce it. Like, Iguinua. I think it's how you pronounce it. It's A-G-I-N-A-W. I don't know how to pronounce it. You know, pretty much put that in your head. Um, black people. That's a derogatory term for an Italian. 1896. It's, it is from Guinea Negro, 1740s. Black person. Person of mixed ancestry. Applied to Italians probably because of their dark skin, their dark complexions relative to Northern Europeans. And after 1911, it was occasionally applied to Hispanics and Pacific Islanders. Okay, so, um, yeah. <laughs> New Guinea was so named 1446 by Spanish explorer Inigo um, Ortez, I think that's how you pronounce his name, De Pete. I'm, I'm not good at pronouncing words, excuse me, in reference to the natives' dark skin and tightly curled hair. Remember that. Remember that this explorer called, um, New Guinea, New Guinea, because of the natives' dark skin and tightly curled hair. Remember that. The Guinea hen, 1570s, is a domestic fowl imported from there. Okay. So, now we know how far back the word Guinea goes. Okay. So, they said in 1546, New Guinea was called New Guinea because of a Spanish explorer. Okay. So, now let's look. Um, hey, Alonzo. Hey. So now let's look at um, some more information about Africa, okay? In the 
1530s, having made voyages to Guinea to obtain ivory, dye woods, and gold, at this stage the English seemed to have little interest in taking slaves. Okay? So this is 1530s. Okay? Now, let me tell you why Africa is not the first to be called Guinea or, or Guinea. Okay, let's start with French Guyana. Okay, that was discovered by Europeans, or shall I say the French? Actually, no, Spanish, my bad, it was the Spanish in 1496. Okay, and really the term Guinea is already referenced towards dark skinned people. We already know that. So it's it's no wonder why they go to all these different places calling the original inhabitants of that land Guinea because obviously they had dark skin complexion. Okay, stay stay with me now. Okay. Now let's go a little bit into Lenape history, okay? Cause this is the biggest piece to why Guinea is is directed toward us, why Guinea comes from us, okay? And after this, I'm going to be talking about Guinea, uh, Guineas from West Virginia, okay? <laughs> little interest or little ability, probably both. Probably both. They probably didn't have like the money. The ability, they probably, you know, and this is another thing too. A lot of people feel like indigenous people were just weak and, and docile and just rolled over, not knowing that a lot of um, natives will mess folks up, especially if they mess with them, okay? But we're going we gonna to get there, okay? So let's talk about the Lenape tribe. The Lenape come from the West. Delaware's claimed ancestors been in the West for many hundreds of years and went, um, I'm sorry, and were progenitors, I don't know how to pronounce that word, excuse me, of 40 other tribes, okay? After many years of immigration towards the rising sun, they reached the Mississippi River where they met the Mingui who came from a very distant region and then they found a powerful nation called Alagiwi Alagiwi okay and from originated the name of the Allegheny mountains okay and this is here in America research this okay research the Allegheny Allegheny comes from Allegheny okay Alagiwi was going to let the Lenape stay there. Now, originally, they did not want to. They was like, eh, you know, but they let them cross the river. But then they got a little, you know, they got cold feet. And so they slaughtered a portion of the Lenape tribe that crossed the river and threatened to kill the rest. So the Lenape teamed up with the Mengiwi and took the Alagiwi out and drove them out okay so this is the story of of the Lenape and, and them coming to the east okay so with that being said the Lenape met Giovanni de Verrazano yeah Verrazano in 1524 they met him in 1524 now let, let's remember the dates now let's remember the dates okay in the 1530s the English went to Guinea so 1524 1530s Okay. Hey Terrence, how you doing? Okay. So 
now let's talk about Africa. Okay, Africa, Guinea, and Africa. Okay, the land now called Guinea belonged to a series of African empires until France colonized it in the 1890s. So, in all reality, Africa, Guinea, and Africa is the last place to be called Guinea. Okay, but otherwise, in the mythology, it would have said that it would have gave us a date. And I actually looked more into um, Guinea history, and a lot of it is unclear. A lot of it is unclear. First, they're like, "Oh, you know, yeah, we we was in Guinea. We we was doing this and we was doing that and." And oh yeah, uh, we we call Guinea because of um, you know they 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 uh, this word means Guinea or Guinea or something like that, and that meant towards the women and all this other stuff. But yet, they got this word from us, and obviously, since they came to America some some years before you know the English went to Guinea to you know get that gold and stuff like that who did they uh, who did they see when they met the Lenape tribe who did they see put put all the dots together y'all guys okay because Allegheny comes from the uh, um, Allegheny. And Lenape already told these stories. We already know they told these stories to these explorers. Okay? So, they got this word from us. And they ch then they changed it to Guinea to Guinea. Okay? And so, whether it's Guinea or Guinea, they used to describe dark-skinned people with curly hair. So what does that say about the Lenape tribe? They're like, oh, you, you Guinea? Okay. Okay. You Guinea? Oh, oh okay. You Guinea. <laughs> you Guinea. Because, you know, in a lot of indigenous American tribes... They really did rename us. They always renamed us. Whether they cannot pronounce the words of our tribes correctly. Or they was just doing whatever. Which is most likely both. So there are a lot of tribes that were originally called something. But the Europeans renamed them and called them something else. And and if you ha are deep into original American history. You, you can already figure that out. Like with... um. Cherokee Nation. Everybody knows um, Anyawaya as Cherokee, okay? But we were originally called um, Anyawaya and not Cherokee, okay? Same with um, Ishuk. Ishuk is a name that we called ourselves. And um, Atatakapa, that's a name that was given to us, okay? So when it comes to these tribes, they're always renaming us. They're always giving us these other names that we don't call ourselves. Okay? And this is no different with the term Guinea. Okay? They simply switch up the pronunciation. That's all. And Guinea or Guinea is meant to describe dark skinned people with curly hair. So. You know, the research I have done on this, I've been doing research on this for a while. And remember, I said on my personal YouTube channel, I was going to do a video about this. And I, I got distracted. I'm, I'm sorry. But I'm making it up to you guys with this video now. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. Um, okay. So. Let's look at more of these notes. Oh, in the books mentioned, read this book. It's called Shaman of the Allegheny. By Michael R. Hall. Okay. 
And oh, okay. So let's also talk about um, guineas of West Virginia. Okay. So guineas of West Virginia come from a white and original American heritage. And a lot of people um, try to force that African title on them, but they're they're not taking it because they know what's up and they know their heritage and um and they can trace their heritage far 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 back and i remember and the reason why i came across this information was because i came across a pdf talking about um guineas of west virginia and the author is pretty biased because she just kept trying to make the assertion that they have to acknowledge their african heritage when honestly they're just telling the truth they're not african like they don't have african ancestors and the fact that throughout the whole ptf she kept saying oh they need to acknowledge the african ancestors i mean african ancestors but yet there was no african ancestor or african tribe she can trace them to so also be careful of that too because a lot of these authors will force african heritage on original americans but they can't prove it. Okay, people always trying to force African heritage on us, but can't prove it. They can't link us to no African tribe, cannot link us with no African person. But steady trying to say that we're Africans or we have to acknowledge African ancestry. And we already know with slavevoyages.org, they were saying like, what, 400,000 Africans came here? But yet, it comes from unpor unpublished sources. Okay? So, yet you see how, like, shady that is? Like, okay, so, you're basing all these Africans coming here off of unpublished sources? That make no sense. That make no sense. Okay? But, um... Yes. Yes, they, they got that term from us. And I remember reading about Guinea, and it was like in the 1440s that um, Portuguese went to Guinea or whatever. But yet, either way it go, we've been having a term Guinea, and it was our Allegheny. Jennifer Ray, they love forcing stuff that doesn't make sense. Exactly, they they don't have the proof whatsoever to back it up and just like i said earlier in this video too a lot of terms come from us and with them moving us around like from the states to south america to africa whatever a lot of languages was being you know traded and stuff like that and there are Africans that are using original American words. Okay? And um, and just like I said too, there are a lot of American crops being grown in Africa as well. So, people, like, it's just it's just so much that has been switched around. And, um, and also people forget to, like, we migrated everywhere around this world. Okay? And, um... You know, some African people claim to come from different places, and some even claim to come from here. You know, and it's no brainer too. Okay, so um, so a lot of this stuff makes sense, and a lot of these things are not being really talked about or um, being acknowledged because Allegheny is ours, and even though the author in that PDF, and if if y'all was wondering what I'm talking about. I shared my post on this page so like just scroll down and, you, and you'll find it or I'll, I'll probably share it again after I get done with this video so y'all guys can look at um, Guinea or Guinea again so um, yes a lot of a lot of these things belong to us and Allegheny is um, a word from the Allegheny okay so People need to understand and realize that 
when it comes to our people, we don't get the credit we deserve. Okay? And we don't get the acknowledgement that others get. And it's kind of like we're the ghost riders. Just imagine like these explorers coming over here, getting these words from us, and then going to other places and using these words with them and blah, blah, blah. And also, let me look at this word too. Okay. Agina. Agina? How do you pronounce it? Agina. Agina. How do I pronounce it? But they say that's a word, an African word. And I don't know how to pronounce the name of the people, but that's where they say it come from. Okay, that, that word comes from. But look at again Aginwa and Alagiwi and Alagini. You know both of them words start with A's. Y'all notice that? Hey, Joseph. Hey, what's up? So, what I'm thinking, what has happened, was that they used that word over there with them. And that was Africans' way of saying Guinea. You know, like, they was probably telling them about us. And it was like, oh, like, Allegheny. And they're like, Aginwa, you know? It's possibility. Nobody knows what them colonizers back in them days, but it's it's a possibility, you guys. And also, just look at the term Allegheny. What is more closer than that? Agena, Agena, or Allegheny? You already got the word Guinea and Allegheny. But a Guinea stretch. So we already know. We already know. And also, um, I want to discuss a little bit about black birding too. And a, and a little bit about um, Pampa New Guinea and stuff like that. Because people don't know. Like this is, is the order of countries called Guinea. Okay. And Guinea, like French uh, Ghana or Guinea or how you want to pronounce it, that was first here in the Americas, okay? And then they went over to New Guinea and called that Guinea or Guinea, and then they went over to Africa and used that word. So just look, just look at the timeline. Just look at the timeline and when they call this country, this country, and that country, this country. Because it's all in order. And the thing that really bothers me the most is, let's look at this. Let me get back on my notes. Because this, this is my thing right here. The land now all... Not, the land now called Guinea uh, belonged to a series of African empires until France colonized it in the 1890s. So what was they calling it before the 1890s? Because if it still belonged to African empires before then... What did those African empires call it? Because I know they all was not calling it just Guinea. And that's a term that um, Europeans pronounced it. Okay. And also, when you look at the um, how these words are used and, and um, how they are spelled. Allegheny. And what's the other one? At at um an an aguina, how you pronounce it? Aguina, aguina. Okay. They're both not spelled and pronounced as Guinea. Okay, so we already know the Europeans remixed that word, and they probably didn't know how to pronounce it either. So that, 
So that's why they just say, we gonna call you Guinea. We don't even know how to, we gonna leave the A out. And <laughs> that's probably what they did. That's probably what they did. So, but either way it goes, you know, that word comes from us. Okay. And, but let's talk a little bit about um, black burning as well. Because I, when I go through my documents and on my French side, on my French side, you know, they own people. Okay. They didn't own my ancestor, but they did own people. And I come across a lot of slave documents and they were saying that um, some of these slaves come from Guinea. Okay. Now, in my mind, I'm just like, hmm. I wonder, Pampa New Guinea. Because a lot of people don't know that black birding was happening so much back then. It was happening so much back then. And a lot of so-called black Americans are now tracing um, their lineage back to black birding. Okay, and ain't it funny how a lot of our people can trace their lineage from black birding, but not the African slave trade? You see how crazy that is? So, I'm, uh, hey, you know, no shade, no no hate, no uh, anger or whatever, but I'm just stating the facts, you know, because I have yet to meet a person that said, oh, yeah, I can trace my lineage from trans like the slave trade, but yet there's so many of our people that's like, oh, yeah, I have papers and documentation of my ancestors coming from Blackbirdie. Hey, Kamaya, how you doing, girl? I love your beadwork. So, yes, they, they know what they were doing, and... It's funny how they have paper documentation for that, but when it comes to the translective slave trade, it's like non-existent. Hey, Brown Wolf, how are you doing today? So, um, people need to keep that in mind. Just because you see Guinea or Guinea does not mean that it's African, okay? Because just like I said, you know, we had that word Allegheny, okay? And obviously that word's come from us. Number two. They were shipping people back and forth. They were shipping us to the South Pacific. And they were uh, shipping South Pacific Islanders to America as well. So, how is it that when they get these papers and documentation that it won't be called Guinea. But somehow Guinea can only be traced back to Africa. You know, you, you, see, you see where the confusion and the hmm part come in. So, yes, when you look at history and when you look at everything, you will see um, the similarities. <laughs> Joseph, he said, yep, it's always crickets as soon as you ask what boat drop they... <laughs> oh, here they got records of that. Exactly. And black burning is the story they don't talk about. They don't. They do not talk about black burning at all. And... I know a lot of us that do look like Pacific Islanders. And I'm always getting hit with that question too. Are you Polynesian? Or are you Melanesian? I'm like, no baby. And and if I am, I don't know. I don't know. I can't I, I can't tell you. I mean, you know, it's a it's a possibility. Because either way it go, you know, Australoid people did come to the Americas, okay? And scientists and anthropologists did say that we had a parallelism with Australoid people and we have a close tie connection with them. So either way it goes, whether it's through blackbirding or just through ancient times and history, you know, that connection is, is still there. Give me one second. I got a drink. So yes. Um and also I know um, there was a post about a woman saying that she got her DNA testing done at um, an Australian college, or should I say university, and they said that her DNA was Native American and Aboriginal Australian, and that um, she got that DNA through black birding. Now, I don't, I mean, I don't know if she did get it through black birding, because just like I said, you know, there was already that connection. 
on them ancestry DNA tests, I noticed a lot of us show Oceana and Polynesian Melanesian percentage. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that can be due to black birding or just us having that ancient um, Australo and Americoid connection anyway, you know. And y'all remember me back in the day. I used to be heavily into the Australoid and Americoid um, anthropology. And I may still get into that too, okay? And I, and I will still talk about that. I, I will talk about that on this page, you know. So, um, then that's why I say anthropology is important. Because I know a lot of people, they just feel like, oh, you know, it's old school. And oh, that was so long ago. And oh, phenotypes. Phenotypes does matter. Phenotypes does matter. Because your environment, your genotype, your facial features... What, what really tell you who the original people are. And everyone on every landmass, they have their phenotype. And their phenotype tells where they come from, who they are, and, and uh, what links they have with different people. So when it comes to anthropology and, uh, and um, phenotypes and stuff like that, I'm big on that because... Number one, when you talk about phenotypes, you're talking about different looks, different facial features, different representations of people. Because they're not just one set phenotype for just a group of people, okay? Even though anthropologists love to put that out there, there's not just no one, you know? And when you look at phenotype charts, you will see multiple um, facial um, features of indigenous people from all over the world so my grandma looked like a Melanesian woman and when she was younger and people thought I looked Puerto Rican and Creole <laughs> you know um I don't know if you ever seen a picture of my grandma but everyone tells me like she looked like an aboriginal Australian and I'm like yeah I know I know she does she looks Tasmanian okay and um and I mean it's no surprise either. It's really no surprise because I I do um come across information that talks about that. I do come across information that talks about that. I remember um this researcher that was talking about Australoid as a basic phenotype, um for Asians, okay, and <laughs> and it's really no secret because when when you read more about our people and about our origins, and I remember I, I referenced this book in my last video, History of the Mingo Indians, they would say that we originated here and spread out into Asia, and they talk about Australia is the basic phenotype for Asians, you could pretty much put two and two together. Okay, so um, with that being said, you know, th this is our homeland and Guinea is our word or Guinea, I should say Guinea is our word. Um, so with the, uh, with the Guineas of West Virginia, they're pretty much like Melungeons, okay, like they're, they're pretty much mix mixed people, you know, um, but they still want to attach that African label on them. And honestly, I don't know why. I do know why. But um, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Because when I was reading a little bit of my, uh, more about what, uh, Guineas of West Virginia, I was like, hmm. Okay. And their knowledge on indigenous uh indigenous american culture and stuff like that they they know a lot they know a lot so it's no secret too it's no secret too and it's funny how they're called guineas of west virginia so and i also think there's a place called um guinea too or guinea or guinea somewhere around virginia yeah, I think I think there is a place. So they I mean, 
they might not even have came from just Papua New Guinea or or Africa Guinea Guinea you know they could have just came from that area you know um and it's it's very important it's very important to look at um regions and locations too because some of these places um they like to give like credit to and like oh yeah this is Africa you know and I just came across um information from I think a I forgot what what kind of book it is but I was tagged in it by Tasha and this man posted it and he was like they admit that Congo was in the West Indies and I was like ooh okay so so they like to throw all these names out and say oh this belongs to this place and this belongs to this place and and people don't know that they was calling certain places um these names you know just like I said with the Congo you know they said Congo was um you know in the West Indies so just imagine people getting paper documents and they, and it says something about Congo and they're like oh Congo Africa when it really it could just be Congo in the West Indies you know so um you got to you got to think about stuff like that you know you got to think about stuff like that it's same with Guinea or Guinea you know there's a Guinea in um I think in Virginia, it it was it was a place. Yeah, I think it is in Virginia, a Guinea, a Guinea in West Virginia, and that's simply where they could have came from. If not there, then Papua New Guinea, because blackbirding most definitely happened. And the fact is that there are um, Melanesians that talk about you know colonizers snatching their people up and um, sending them away. So for them to have oral history of that. It's, it, it it seals the deal, okay? Because the fact that when it comes to slavery of any sort, and, and it involves us and Africans, the fact that they have to teach Africans that we were kidnapped or sold into slavery raises red flags, okay? So I, th I think that's weird. I think that's weird that, like, you have to teach Africans that they were... Um, kidnapped and sold over here and now we're them and and i know like when they record <laughs> when they record their reactions it is hilarious because they're just kind of like what like i remember one video they was like oh yeah um yeah africans were kidnapped in, in this area and they were sent over to america and now these african americans you see on tv from america they're your descendants she just said that she was like <laughs> she was so confused and i was like but yes baby i'm confused too because i have no clue what they're talking about just like you do so the fact that they have to coach them about our history Throws a lot of red flags, but yet Melanesians, they could tell you what time of day it was. They could tell you what day it was. They could tell you who they done kidnapped, what they look like, what the people that kidnapped them look like. Like, they could just go into detail about it. But yet, with these Africans, it's like, they're like, uh, I don't know. So, it's all in the power of the media and, and the television because the television loves to put these stereotypes and say oh this is that and this is that but when you talk to the people of that area or areas they're just like me me no speaking English like I don't know what you're talking about baby so okay um I remember when asking my mom father where his mom is from he remembers her saying Tahiti. I thought Haiti when he told me a while back because it's it closer and sounds similar. But why would she lie? Exactly. I get told all the time I don't have typical Negro black features. Y'all already know my case. They are always telling me you look racially ambiguous. And I'm just like, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I mean. I, I mean, you know, a lot of you already know people. They like, like, they like to say I'm Mexican. They're like, oh, I thought you was Latina. I'm like, that ain't a real nationality. 
So that ain't, I'm I'm not I'm not Latina. Um <laughs> so yes, yeah, like that people know. People know that we're not Africans and they know that we don't look like them. And I know a lot of people get off on us looking like them, but the fact that of the matter is if you always have to like compare us to them if you always have to push that down our throat and say that we come from Africa if you always feel like oh I have to find someone that look like her and I'll just no because I remember one person was like oh yeah you uh you look like um Congo people or like some type of people and then they and then like he posted the link of the girl in my YouTube comment section, and I'm looking at her. I'm just like, she looks nothing like me, y'all. I'm just like, you must think all melanated people look alike, <laughs> cause I I don't look nothing like. I like she don't even have cheekbones like mine. Like her stuff was slanted, slanted. Like my my I got my cheekbones are high. So I see why looking up what different places were called at that time it's important yeah it's really important it's really important because how can you say that congo is in africa but you was calling Cong uh uh the west in somewhere west indies congo or whatever you know so it's just like same thing with with guinea you know they was have a place in west virginia called guinea you know, West or somewhere near West Virginia. I think it's in one of those areas, but I think definitely um, West uh, in in Virginia. For real, I remember talking to a brother from Nigeria that had no idea about the slave trade or slavery times in America. And you know, and and Africans are not dumb. They are not dumb. Okay, they're like the smart, some of the smartest people ever. Okay, they like really smart. So, for them not to even know about us or our history raises a lot of red flags, and and I'm 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 it's I'm kind of like the same way, you know, the fact that they have to be taught about slavery in general raises a lot of red flags, okay, and they get off the the um notion that. You know, we we come from slaves or whatever. Like they like folks get off on that. They love saying that we come from slaves and we we come from slavery and all this other stuff. And that's the only way they can really try to trace us in with them. Like we like we don't know that a lot of us didn't come from slaves. Okay, I have been far back on my paper research since like the 1700s, and I have yet to see the slave schedule. No, not saying that it's impossible for some of my family members to be slaves. Not saying that, you know, but for people to act like that's all we come from is ignorant and it's not correct. It's not correct. Like, I come from so many business owners and farmers and people who was making a name for themselves in, in those time frames. So, Okay. Yes, Melanesian people don't need no missionaries coming. <laughs> Who they don't need no missionaries coming to talk to them about slavery? Yeah. Yeah, like why would you need someone to talk to you about some slavery? Like, oh my goodness. Stay away from the missionaries too. They 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 they, they too much. I can't deal with missionaries, y'all. They they make me nervous. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. Mm -mm. <laughs> but yeah, for y'all who just coming in, I'm going to um, discuss about the Lenape tribe a little bit more, okay? Because um, I, I did not know that the Lenape came from the West. I thought the Lenape was always from the East. So when I found out that they actually come from the West, I was like, oh, okay. You know, that's that's new. That's different. You know, um, the Delawares claimed ancestry, I mean, I'm sorry, ancestors been um, in the West for many hundreds of years, okay? So, I don't think that they were new, new, okay? But I do notice 
it doesn't say thousands. I do notice it does not say thousands, so you know. But um and, but they um progenitors of forty other tribes. I have no clue what that word means, but I'm guessing they was a part of forty other tribes. That's what I'm assuming that word means. Okay. And um and then they came over and reached the Mississippi River where they met the McGeewee. And that's and you know when I saw McGeewee I was like, that sounds like an African tribe. Not saying that they are, but the name caught my attention because I'm just like, hmm, okay. But I do remember, I do remember you guys that some tribes did travel over to Africa. Okay, so let's keep that in mind too. Okay, so and just like I said with the names and the words and the vocabulary obviously have been switched around. So we already know that. Okay, so uh, and, and also said McGee come from a very distant region. So I wonder who did who are them? Who is the McGee? I'm going to have to look more into them because if they talk when they come from a distant region, it don't sound like they really from here anyway. Okay? And um, and then they found a powerful nation called the Allegheny. Okay? And, and from originated the name of Allegheny Mountains. Okay? So Allegheny comes from Allegheny. Allegheny slaughtered a portion of the Lenape that crossed the river and threatened to kill the rest. Lenape teamed up with the McGeewee and took them out. And the Giwi, um left, you know, they drove them out. And then the McGeewee and the Lenape lived in peace. Okay. So that's so that's uh, the backstory again about means that they are the originals. Okay, thank you for clearing that up because I was going to look it up, but I forgot. So, yes. Okay. Means that they are the originals. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. That's what they said about... Yeah. Of 40 other tribes. They are the progenitors of 40 other tribes. Oh. Okay. So, they are originals of the 40 other tribes. Oh, okay. Okay. So... Maybe 40 other tribes from the West. You know, now since I'm really thinking about it, maybe they could have a connection with the, um, with the Olone or the Costanoan. Because when you look at the Costanoan, um, they look like us. You know, they was dark skinned with tight curly hair. So... You know, it's it's not impossible. That that could actually be a connection with them. And oh yeah, also, if y'all head on down to shopperjanine.com, we have a shirt of the Costanoan. So check that out because it is bomb. <laughs> it is definitely bomb. So yes. And also, if you was wondering, I got my red skin Indian shirt on from shoporiginating.com. Be sure to check that out as well. So yeah, y'all. Um, a, a lot of a lot of these African countries and colonies. When when I was looking up these African countries and colonies, I noticed something that a lot of them were were formed in the 1900s and so I'm just sitting here looking at this screen I'm just like okay so you came in at the 1950s you came in in the 1940s so what's up with that connection with Iroquois no Co uh, Costa Nome is from the west side they're from the west they also could look like they could be 
um, Papua New Guineans as well. So yeah, um, but what I noticed about these African um, countries was that they really came about in the 1900s. And it was like, oh yeah, they gained independent independence from this place and that place, and they formed the uh, the country in nineteen hundreds. And I'm just like, okay, you know. So I thought that was odd, you know, because when it comes to American history, we we can have the information from X to Z. Like you can look up the time frame, the name, who possibly who named it. All those things, but when it comes to African countries, it's like you really have to play like a guessing game because how is it that when when you especially when you look up Guinea, you really don't know the name before it before they called it Guinea because obviously it was being owned by um, other African rulers and stuff like that, so. I'm just in here, I'm just like, okay, so, why are you, where are they getting these names from? To be calling it that anyway. What about the Shawnee? I don't know about the Shawnee. But I did hear uh, that the Lenape and the Shawnee were living amongst each other um, and, and things like that. So, yeah, they, they came over here. You know, there was there and actually it was the Alligiri fault that they started beefing because that was some sneaky stuff. Like how are you gonna sit there and be like, Oh, you know, I want uh, I wanna be cool with you and, and you're just gonna be like, Oh, well no, but then change your mind and be like, Okay, cool. And I'm guessing like the Alligiri was like just scared of like their power or whatever. And then it was like, Don't cross the river, don't come over here after they told them that they could cross the river and chill with them. And then they just start killing them. I'm just like, whoa, well, what was the point of that? Like, why, why did you feel the need to be killing folks? But there could be more to the story that the Lenape did not tell or was not passed down. Because I, will, I, do, I do need to learn more about the Alagiwi because I will read more of that Shaman of the Alagiwi book. Because I want to learn more about them. And I do believe that the Alagibi was mound builders. Okay? So, and we already know that mound builders was building mounds that are way older than these pyramids out here. So, you know, people can call it a ball of dirt. But the ball of dirt is old, baby. They old. <laughs> they old, baby. So yeah, um, yeah, but anyway, the term Guinea comes from us, and it's obvious, it's obvious that it comes from us, and when they seen our people complexion, and seen that we was calling, um, you know, our, our mountains and rivers, um, Allegheny, and knowing that it, it came from the Allegheny tribe, of course, they're going to sit there and start calling people, oh, you guinea. You guinea because you dark skin. And we already know that the term guinea is used to refer black people, dark skin people, people with dark skin and curly hair. So obviously when they met the Lenape, that's possibly what they look like. So just putting two and two together. But yeah, y'all guys, that's what I really want to talk about when it came to guinea or Guinea because there's a lot of confusion and um, and a lot of people just don't know about our history like that so that's why people like me are out here researching things and bring this information to the public because not a lot of people know not a lot of people know and we want to make it known so yeah um, I will see y'all guys later and until next time bye